Welcome everyone. We are diving into factors influencing heart disease death rates. Without further ado, let's get into it. I want to shed light on a critical issue that affects millions of lives globally, heart disease. As we delve into this topic, it's crucial to recognize its significance. Heart disease isn't just a health concern. It's the number one death worldwide. In the United States alone, the numbers are staggering, surpassing even cancer and COVID-19 in the recent years. Heart disease remains a formidable adversary to public health. In 2021, it accounted for a shocking 20% of all deaths in the United States. Now that's a number we can't afford to ignore. But what exactly falls under the umbrella of heart disease? It encompasses major cardiovascular diseases such as acute myocardial infarction, coronary heart disease, heart failure, and stroke. Now, let's shift our focus to a specific data we've gathered. This data zooms in on heart disease mortality rates among individuals aged 35 and above in the United States for the year 2014. It provides mortality rates per 100,000 people for each county for individuals dealing with heart disease. It includes factors such as gender, race, and geographical location. Through our research, we hope to raise awareness of how these factors can influence an individual's susceptibility to heart disease and ultimately mortality outcomes. In essence, this research isn't just about the numbers. It's about people. It's about uncovering insights that can pave the way for targeted interventions and ultimately save lives. We want to investigate why some people are more likely to die from heart disease than others. To do this, we'll look into three main factors. One, geographical location. We'll examine whether heart disease death rates differ depending on where people live. Second, ethnicity. We'll analyze how belonging to different ethnic groups affects the likelihood of dying from heart disease. Third, gender. We'll explore whether being male or female influences the risk of death from heart disease. Understanding how these factors interact can help us identify patterns and develop strategies to reduce the risk of heart disease and improve overall health outcomes. Let's look at this bar chart showcasing the differences in heart disease death rates across the nation in the U.S. This will help us grasp how heart disease varies from state to state. Each bar represents a state, and the height of the bar shows how many people have died from heart disease in that state. The taller the bar, the more deaths there have been. For instances, Texas ranks number one with the highest heart disease deaths, and coming in second is Georgia. On the opposite end, with the lowest heart disease deaths is Hawaii and Delaware. We must determine which factors contributed to these extremes. We must determine if this information is influenced by quality of health care, income, lifestyle choices, resources availability, or etc. The mortality rates due to heart disease between genders. Look at this bar graph. Blue representing males and orange representing females. What's noteworthy here is the balance. The bars are almost the same height. Now, although the data seems well balanced, it doesn't mean that the risks are the same. Men who have lower estrogen levels, drink more alcohol, have more stress, and visit the doctors less can contribute to heart disease. Women who have menopause, less estrogen, autoimmune disease, and high depression and anxiety can also contribute to heart disease. To the left, we call this a box plot. The middle line in the box represents an average death rate from heart disease. The highest average deaths are black Americans. To the right, we have a bar graph. The tallest bar had the highest number of cases representing white Americans. On the other end of the spectrum, the shortest bar corresponds to American Indian and Alaska Natives. This visual comparison makes it clear that heart disease does not impact all communities equally. And some groups may need more targeted health interventions and resources to reduce their risk. This method is a common practice in research to help identify disparities and potential factors contributing to differences in health outcomes across racial lines. Thank you, Ty. Uh, now we're going over the histograms on heart disease mortality rate. 
These are histograms representing the distribution of a health-related measurement across a population, with most values clustering around the middle. The, the shape is bell-like, indicating a normal distribution. In other terms, it helps us identify what's atypical and what deviates from the norm. A bell shape is good, because that means we can go actually do some testing on it. It shows a range of death per 100,000 and shows how often each range occurs. The higher the bar means more deaths. The middle is where the bar is the tallest, which means it is the most common. Now is the chi-square test. Uh, this slide might look a little bit mathy, but we'll break it down real easily. Uh, this table is a summary of what the statistics is called a, a chi-square, which helps us determine if there is significant association, heart disease, mortality rate across the different categories that we have, which was gender, ethnicity, county, and state. The number measures how much the observed avia deviates from what we would expect by chance alone. Larger number means greater differences randomly what we see and what would occur randomly. The p-value itself is what's really important. This tells whether the data, it's, uh, the data with the category has an association or if it's just chance. A smaller number suggests is that, the, uh, that it is associated and not just random. Let's look at the p-numbers here. You can see gender is really small and ethnicity is very, very small. That means there is association with death in the mortality rate for people over the age of 35. If you look at county and state, it is very close to one, which means that there won't necessarily be a strong link there and the data that we're seeing can happen to be random. Next, we did the z-test, which identifies the significant impact that each category could have. It is a me method that tells the difference between the two groups, such as men and women, or black and white, to determine if there is a true difference. If it's negative, it means the number we're looking at is lower than average. A small p-value indicates that we should sit up and take notice. It's less like that it is, will be less likely to be a fluke. Oh, by a small, we mean less than 0.05. Our studies show that women tend to have lower heart disease morality rates compared to men. This is not a small difference. The number strongly suggests that female is linked to being a lower risk of dying from heart disease. When it comes to ethnicity, we see that not all groups are affected equally, specifically Hispanic and Asian and Pacific Islander populations are showing significantly lower mortality rate. And how about where we live? It turns out the impact of living in different counties doesn't show a clear pattern in heart disease mortality rate. However, when we go zoom and look at the states, there's certain states like Arizona, California, and many other significant numbers. To touch back real quick on counties, we didn't really test that much since it was a perfect 1.00000 with the p-value in the chi-square test, so that is not any significance there. So that's, now let's look at modeling. The modeling we did was linear regression. We mainly focused on gender ethnicity since the previous test before showed where the biggest correlation was. If uh, Starting with uh, gender, for males and females, we definitely saw that there was lower amount of population affected in females than males. You can also see this within the green dots as well as the lower line showing that there is definitely less people affected. This is interesting. This is definitely one interesting take to see. So now we're going to go look at the linear regression model that displayed with heart mortality and by race. We had white as the default itself. They were more in the middle ground. Once we start looking at blacks and American Indian and Alaska natives, blacks went up by 60 and the latter went up by 35 compared to the default white group. Now, however, if we look at the other two, it is a different story. Hispanic being the second lowest had a decrease of 151 people per 100,000, while Asian and Pacific Islanders had about 195 decrease. To note, we also did clustering for these models, which showed very similar results. So now for results and recommendations, uh, they would definitely want to be more looking to race, gen race and gender, specifically Hispanics, Asians, and females, see what's helped causing it, whether it's the culture, the way they eat, the society, etc. Definitely try to dig in to see if we can get that affected within the other people overall. After that, probably dig deeper into geographical locations. Even though we didn't find any correlation, maybe there is something that we're missing. Maybe we need to go into a wider scale, look into the whole world instead of just the United States to see if we can find any correlation there. And finally, we need to make sure that we do raise awareness overall of the results that we do see here and let the public know that, hey, there's certain people more affected than others. This is a slide showing our contributions. We did it about evenly overall. It was a really fun project. These are our references. Thank you so much.